Welcome to The Real News and welcome to The Black Report on The Real News. And joining us again is Bill Black, who joins us from Kansas City, Missouri, where he is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white-collar criminologist, a former financial regulator, and author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So what's on your mind in this report? Well, so a mini correction. I'm actually in uh, Bloomington, Minnesota, about uh, eight miles uh, from where uh, the, uh, another black man, a uh, young black man, was uh, shot to death by the police. So let me talk about uh, what criminologists uh, know and are distressed uh, about the lies that are propagated and most recently propagated in the New York Times, unsurprisingly, uh, in the context of a book review by Barry Friedman. Um, he, he set it up as a supposed contest between the right and the left on uh, crime and policing. Uh, and uh, Barry Friedman's areas of expertise are blue collar crime and policing. The book supposedly on the left uh, by Malcolm Sparrow, uh, Sparrow uh, is or was a Brit, uh, was a, involved in uh, being a police uh, official uh, and then became a public policy uh, scholar at the, the New York Times, but in fact is best known uh, for being a major supporter of the efforts uh, to uh, destroy effective uh, regulation and supervision uh, under the Clinton and Gore reinventing government uh, stuff uh, that created such a criminogenic environment and helped produce the uh, fraud epidemics that drove the crisis. So he's hardly a representative of the quote unquote left. And the person on the right, I won't even mention, give her publicity, uh, but she is a wacko. She has no expertise or background in criminology. And it's basically her pitch is women get raped uh, because uh, they dress like sluts uh, and blacks get arrested a lot because blacks are far more likely to be criminals. And we really need to crack down on these things. Uh, the thing that drove me crazy about this review um, uh, by Mr. Uh, Freeman, Dr. Freeman, is that he allowed to go uh, with no rebuttal uh, the claims of this wacko uh, that uh, there is no discrimination in policing. Uh, the police simply uh, arrest uh, far more blacks because blacks commit far more crime. And then a second uh, allied statement um, or paraphrase uh, by Friedman that uh, said uh, the response of the New York Police Department uh, when studies showed that their stop and frisk were overwhelmingly of uh, people of color was, well, actually, we don't stop them enough uh, compared to the percentage of complaints we get on people of color. Uh, we should be stopping uh, doing even more stops and frisks of uh, blacks uh, and Latinos. Uh, and this is pretty appalling if you know anything about uh, criminology, uh, because what, of course, uh, this professor has done and the New York Police Department and the WACO is conflate a crime with blue collar crime, for one thing. And second, to take whatever's reported to the police as if that was a real uh, the indication of how much crime was actually uh, committed. And neither of these things is true. Uh, elite white collar crimes simply are not even counted. And the fact that we don't even count them, of course, is the final demonstration of how trivially uh, we treat these things. And these white collar crimes are far more numerous, cause vastly more dollar losses, and kill and maim uh, probably more people than blue collar crime. The last how how does the white collar crime kill and maim? Well, take an example of uh, the Takata airbags. Uh, these explode and kill and maim people. Or take the VW uh, 11 million frauds uh, where they uh, dramatically understate uh, the pollution. Well, that pollution kills people. Uh, when you have frauds about build building materials in uh, China and when you have them in uh, Turkey and such, uh, 
thousands, indeed tens of thousands, cumulatively of people die uh, because of the frauds about those building uh, materials. Uh, corruption, of course, does the same kind of thing. So um, we actually know that in places like the United States, these white collar crimes are committed uh, amazingly disproportionately by people who aren't of color, people who look a whole lot more like me uh, a and such. And um, we know that the tiny subsection of crimes uh, that are reported, uh, as I said, don't even include these things. So I was appalled by this and thought that uh, uh, and did an article uh, explaining why that this uh, create helps create this culture in which we see and, po and more importantly, police the um, people of color and let's be particular, blacks and Latinos uh, and more particular, black and Latino young males, uh, to put it uh, in the real uh, truth, as uh, different and dangerously different people. So that uh, here, again, only about uh, 10 miles uh, from our home, uh, someone allegedly was driving in a condition that literally millions of people are driving at any given time with a tail light out. And so, uh, you know, uh, probably all of us have had a tail light out if we're any age, uh, driven for any years. Uh, the police ha would never come up to regular white drivers, as they would define them, uh, and uh, say, uh, put your hands in the air if they stopped us for a taillight, right? So this is the very first thing. Uh, put your hands in the air and then give me your uh, identification. Well, the only way to give people, police your identification uh, is to either reach for your pocket uh, or if you have that uh, identification uh, in the glove compartment, reach for the glove compartment, which is, of course, what we all do in these circumstances, but we don't get shot uh, in these uh, circumstances. And I would urge people to focus on the police officer in the, in the video of the Minnesota encounter, right? The police officer is freaking out, and I, I'm not making fun of him. Um, uh, but uh, he plainly didn't want to shoot somebody, right? But he followed a course of action that he would never follow for whites. And that course of action, quite possibly through this miscommunication, right? I'm telling you, don't move. And you, but you, I just told you to give me your ID. Which of those things is going to happen, right? Uh, and then somebody ends up shot. Well, again, that is because police officers have inculcated this belief system uh, that young black and Latino males are uniquely dangerous people and they escalate in. in far too many uh, occasions instead of doing what they do with people right. like me, which is de-escalate. And then the idea is that, you know, this, this street crime, which, which is characterized as, as, as black crime, which we know the numbers says that actually isn't true if you look at the numbers across the country, but, but the idea is that white collar crime doesn't do direct harm. It's not violent. Uh, your point is it's actually more violent. Yeah, it's it's if you, violence means what you do to people. Um, again, the CEO probably doesn't want the people to die, so the intent element may not be there. But they are quite willing for people to die if it makes them a few extra bucks when they commit these crimes. I'm not obviously saying all CEOs, but the CEOs willing to lead these frauds are willing to have people die and and. In the China case of the fake infant formula, infants die and have 300,000 hospitalized for kidney stones. You can also see this happen on construction sites across the country. The number of workers that get killed in construction sites 
I believe he's either more or at least rivals the people that get killed in car accidents. It's very high, and it is m most particularly high among uh, people who aren't documented, um, who are afraid to ha have. Well, this it. is all amortized in the cost of doing business, and and that's that's the real violence. This this is the conscious the factor. Net, we know so many construction they save workers. save a lot will, of money. Yeah, we know that many construction workers will die every year, but you know the cost of doing business. You know it's okay. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.